Hey guys, welcome back. I got a great video for you today. This is an awesome training aid. I really enjoy this for people that tend to cast in the swing. They're losing that, that lag early in the downswing, casting that club out. Maybe you don't have very much forward shaft lean and when you get to the ball, your club shaft is actually leaning backwards instead of leaning forwards and really compressing and getting the, the nice solid strike on that golf ball that feels like the, you know, we want to feel like that golf ball is really sticking to the face, almost like a suction cup to the face as we're coming through contact and then just explodes off the face to get a lot of distance. Well, this is a, the best training aid that I have found. It's called the Impact Snap. I didn't invent this, this training aid, but I think it's absolutely fantastic and I really like it for those of you out there who struggle flipping, casting, and not getting enough lag. So I'm gonna walk through exactly how to use this. I'm gonna give you a complete guide on what I would do to use this, this and some drills that you can do to practice. So let's start out by talking about some lag here. And when I'm coming in my downswing, there's a couple things that need to happen for lag. Number one, I wanna feel like as I start my downswing, I'm actually increasing the angle. So my angle is increasing with my, my wrist as I'm starting the downswing. That means I don't wanna get all the way fully rested. I don't wanna pick up the club really quickly and then feel like it's fully maxed out. I'm gonna to tend to cast as I start down. I wanna feel like I'm saving that up as I'm starting my downswing and I'm actually increasing that angle. Look how my right belt elbow tucks in. Look how my wrist kinda of is cupped up and it's nice and flat. One of the mistakes that I'll see people making sometimes is they wanna cup this wrist like this and I get a bend in my left wrist instead of keeping it nice and flat. I wanna keep it flat. Your wrist can only go, so if I hold my arm straight out parallel with the ground, my wrist can only go about this far, a little bit past 90 with my wrist nice and flat. That's all the lag or the sharpest angle that you're gonna get. The rest of the angle that you're seeing from there, and I'll go ahead and, and pause halfway down, this is straight up and down. Watch what happens when I flatten out that club. Now all of a sudden it appears to be a much sharper angle. So that's happening. That's what we call the move in our top speed golf system. What we're doing is we're actually shallowing that club out as we're getting lag. Elbow goes into my right side and then from there I'm really letting that get some forward shaft lean through contact. So from face on again, increasing the angle of lag, club is flattening, left wrist is bowed, a little bit bowed or, or flat is good also, right elbow in. From there I'm clearing my body out of the way. I gotta let these hips go, I gotta let these shoulders open feel like they're clearing out of the way so that I can get that forward shaft lean and I can take loft off this club. The more loft I take off, tour pros usually take off about 30% of the loft on the club at impact. The more loft I take off, the more penetrating, the more compression, and the, the more solid the ball is going to feel. So now let's go over the impact snap and talk about how to do this. Actually, before we do that, let's talk about one last piece there. I'm getting to my maximum lag as I'm about halfway down. We call this the max lag position, left arm's about parallel with the ground. From there, I am releasing everything out in front. So now you'll see that if you look at my club, it's splitting my forearms for the very first time there. As we back that up, the club's a bunch of lag, releasing, 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 and then that gets in the maximum release. Then I come on up to my good full follow through. So I'm releasing this club, even though I have tons of forward shaft lean, even though I have tons of lag back here, I'm letting that lag go to get the speed into the ball. I've gotta let that go to get the speed. So let's take out my impact snap again. And let's walk through all these positions just talking about the exact same things. And this forces you to really feel the good positions. So I'm gonna grip this. You'll notice that the logo is on the top. The red logo, that goes facing up. There's a little ball that sticks out to the right. And then I'm gonna take my normal grip, or what I would feel like is my normal grip. This is, a, this is kind of a square uh, grip here, so it's not gonna be exactly like your normal club. If you open up your hand, you'll feel that the bottom of your fingers fit really nicely into the corner of the grip. So the bottom of my fingers fit nicely in the corner. My, my index fingers, if I was shooting a gun, is gonna feel like it's flat, like the bottom of this impact snap would be almost like a trigger. So the, the corners at the base of my fingers, I have a, almost a trigger finger there at the, the side or the bottom of this grip. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grip this all the way down at the end of this. Now as I go to the top of the swing, again, I wanna feel like I'm increasing lag. So as I start down, I'm increasing lag. From here, this yellow ball is nowhere near my hand. So it's gonna be really uh, far away from my hand. My left wrist is bowed. If I'm looking at this Impact Snap logo, 
this would be pointing right back to my body. So let me see if I can get a good camera angle here where you can see this. Let's imagine I'm hitting it towards you guys at the camera. If I'm starting my downswing, if this is pointing back down to my body, I'm doing it wrong. I want to have this left wrist bowed and that's pointing on out in front of me. So if I come back over the ball here, as I start down, and I'm going to go into a lot of detail here because I know I get a lot of questions on this and I'd like to, to really go in a lot of detail here to answer any questions we have. So bear with me. <laughs> Might get a little long-winded. This is going to be slightly bowed. This impact snap, the red logo there is pointing slightly out. At that point, my elbow, my right elbow, is into my side, pretty close to my side. Now from here, as I come through contact, again, I'm letting my hips clear out of the way, letting my body clear out of the way. As I get through contact, my wrist is gonna be bowed forward. It's actually bowed down, down like this. This would be up, down, so my thumb's going down to the ground. And it's slightly bowed forward that when I do that, this ball, this yellow ball is on the back of my forearm. See, that's on the back of my forearm. If I was to cast, let's go to the same position, and I was gonna cast or flip, that ball shoots out to the right side of my, of my arms. So if I just flip, that ball's on this side. If I do it correctly, and this is a bit exaggerated, so don't worry about it being exaggerated. This is slightly exaggerated. This is gonna be on the back of my forearm. If I wanted to really exaggerate that, then as I come on through, I'm gonna have so much forward shuffling and rotate the hand so much that that ball can pop through the inside of my forearm. Now that's gonna be really exaggerated. For those of you who hit a big slice, you really lose a lot of distance. That's what I want you guys to work on at first. Really get that to go through the inside of the forearm. So that's gonna help you there. Now the last piece is how we release this club. We talked about how halfway down, we're in maximum lag. As we come on through, we're releasing that. You can hear that ball. There's a metal, metal ball inside this impact snap. What you're gonna do, let that fall to the bottom of the grip. As you set up, you can go ahead and let that fall as you go to the top. You're gonna pause here from this position, just like we talked about. We're flattening out the grip. So pause here, we're flattening out. I don't want this club to be straight up and down. It's gonna be flattened out like we talk about in the move in the, section, in the system. And then that ball is gonna to fall to the bottom. Now from there, I'm gonna snap that club, clearing my hips, letting my arms go, going straight for the straight line release like we talk about in the top speed golf system. Letting that club release through impact. And I'm gonna have this ball hit against the back of my forearm at the same time that ball inside the, inside the grip hits. So I'm gonna to go to the top, get my good lag position, and then from there, I'm letting everything rotate on through. After I've done that a few times, I can go ahead and swing all the way on through to a good full finish. That's gonna get you the sensation of not only having lag, but releasing that lag and getting the speed from the club coming through contact. So go watch this video a couple times. I know I'll put a lot of information in there. Work on this, and what I want you to do is, once you get your impact snap, work through these drills, lag position, pausing in impact, pausing in the release. Check the positions, make sure your body's opening, make sure you're losing, getting lag and losing it correctly. Do about 100 reps of that. Next, we're gonna do 100 reps, letting that fire just through there. And I'm gonna check to make sure this ball's on the back of my forearm, check to make sure I'm into my straight line release like we talk about in the system. And then from there, I'm going halfway down. I'm gonna do the same thing, come all the way on through to the finish, facing the target, one nice fluid swing. Once I've done it with impact snap, then I'm gonna go ahead, and I'll show you guys a slow motion video, getting some good lag here. But then I'm gonna go ahead and take it to the course and I'm gonna get the same feeling hitting some golf balls. There we go, guys. Work on that lag. You're gonna hit it really far. Good power, good speed. Let that stuff go through impact and you're gonna be able to whip that club. I'll see you guys soon. All right, guys, I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an even better bonus for you. If we wanna get distance in the golf swing, we've gotta get a lot of lag and then we've gotta let that lag go. Well, I've got my number one lag video. I'm gonna play a preview of that here in a second. If you're on a desktop device, go ahead and click the link that pops up in your screen. If you're on a phone or a tablet, click the iCard that's somewhere on your screen right now. That's gonna take you to where you can get instant access to that full video. Plus, you're gonna get five videos from our top speed golf system. Never gonna cost you a dime. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Click that thumbs up button. That really helps us out. And also remember to subscribe. That way you'll see our newest videos. See you guys in the live video.
Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. If I do it this way versus holding that position, exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.